The female wolf has been shot in the heart by a hunter. In order to see her son for the last time, she drags her severely injured body through the ice and snow, until she reaches her nest. She passes away but her baby boy thinks that his mother is sleeping, so he hurriedly licks her nose to wake her up. However, he receives no response. Anyway, he lies by her side. After a night of snow so thick that it covers her body, the baby realizes his mother is dead. He howls in pain. Without a mother to take care of him, how will he survive in this cruel world? Soon, he hears his fellow wolves howling. Baby wolf follows that sound and looks closely, it is a pack of wolves. However, before the baby catches up, the wolves disappear without leaving a trace. Not knowing what to do in the dangerous snow, it keeps walking aimlessly, but slips down the mountainside and falls into a snow cave. The environment in the cave is so scary that the little wolf runs out of the cave. Accidentally, it comes to the shore of the lake. He wants to drink water to replenish his energy. On the other side of the lake, there is a man named Jack, who is trying to get some water for himself. The man whistles at it but Baby Wolf has never seen a two-legged monster. The little one is afraid and turns around to walk away. The days go by and the young wolf is alone, wandering around to find water and food. Suddenly in the distance, a few small mice appear. When Baby Wolf sees it, he hurriedly chases it. But the rats are too fast to kill and quickly get into a hole. Then, the hungry little wolf raises its head and looks up, seeing food. The hungry wolf discovers a wild rabbit hanging from a tree. And because it is too naive, it does not know this is a hunter's trap. It jumps constantly to get the bait on the tree. But this rabbit is really too high. Little wolf basically can't handle it. And what's worse is that he tramples the hunter's traps, hanging upside down as well. No matter how hard he struggles, he can't escape. At this time, three Indians holding hunting rifles appear. The leader immediately opens the wolf's mouth and discovers that he has very beautiful white teeth. It is also a very rare hybrid of a wolf and a dog. So he decides to bring it back and tame it and also gives him a very nice name, White Fang. The wolf is brought back to the tribe. Every day it is trained hard. Although it is hard, he can continue to live for a few months. Several months later, White Fang has grown into an adult wolf and he is used by his masters to help them with their chores, such as fishing. He protects the safety of the tribe when the night falls, but the genetic erosion in its body always makes it yearn for freedom. One day, Jack and his friend Alex arrive in the village and they greet its people. Jack sees White Fang and remembers him. He approaches the wolf to have a better look. Later, Jack even tries to pat White Fang but his owner stops Jack. He believes that the dogs are their tools and they are meant to serve them. They are not to be petted or played with. Generally, the other dogs do not like White Fang, and he spends most of the nights alone. The next morning, Jack wanders around the village and spots White Fang. He follows after him, but he is soon surprised by a huge brown bear. The bear chases him and Jack runs for dear life. He stumbles, but he is able to get up and find shelter under a wooden structure. The bear insists at it and does whatever is possible to get to Jack. Thankfully, it can't reach him. However, the bear grabs his hand and wounds Jack. White Fang appears in the scene and realizes that Jack is in serious trouble. He distracts the bear, and the two of them measure each other up. White Fang gets scared and runs. However, when the bear turns the other way, White Fang appears again. The two animals walk around the place. They wait to see who is going to make the first move. The bear shows its enormous body, while White Fang shows his teeth and demonstrates that he is not going to make a step back. The bear lets out a heavy moan but White Fang is not scared. Although the confrontation lasts for a while, the bear retreats and leaves. White Fang flees as well upon realizing that Jack is safe. Soon, Jack and Alex gather the supplies they need, and they are ready to depart. Jack sees White Fang and tries to befriend him by offering him some food. Jack mounts the boat with Alex, and White Fang observes them as they leave. Jack and Alex are on a mission to find gold and become rich by following Jack's dead father's directions. Later, White Fang is taken in town by his master. A man named Smith and his gang see the wolf. They want to test his strength. They have an aggressive dog themselves, and they unleash him on White Fang. However, their dog is not an equal match. White Fang overpowers him easily. When the wolf's master joins them, he breaks the fight. Smith tells him it is illegal to bring a wolf in town, but he will not call the sheriff if the man gives him the wolf. The man will not give White Fang away and tries to gift them some rugs instead. However, Smith only wants the wolf. He sends his men to call the sheriff. Left with no choice, the man sells White Fang for money. Smith and his gang take White Fang into a barn, and for the following days they try to train him. Soon, they bring the wolf in an illegal animal fight pit, and Smith asks White Fang to bring all his aggressiveness out. White Fang is much stronger than the dog he is fighting and wins the fight, 
While the other dog lies in the pit defeated, Smith collects the money from the bets and takes White Fang back in his cage before rewarding him with some food. He keeps taking him to more fights. One night, he intends to reward White Fang with some extra food, but the wolf is angry at him. Smith throws the bone on the floor, and he plainly walks away. Soon, the wolf is taken to yet another fight. This time, he will have to fight against a bulldog. The dog's owner is very confident in the bulldog's abilities, and he believes that Smith will lose his money today. The bulldog is a fair fight for White Fang, and that is obvious from the first moment the fight starts. It seems like White Fang gains the upper hand, but the bulldog keeps coming back. The wolf smashes the dog on the ground a couple of times, but the bulldog gets up again and again. Eventually, the bulldog pins White Fang down. That makes Smith jump in the pit and start beating White Fang, in order to convince him to continue the fight. Jack and Alex happen to be present in that fight, and they stop Smith. Some people try to stop the bulldog from biting on White Fang. Jack and Alex take White Fang in a friendly house, and they treat the wound on the wolf's neck. The company gives the wolf some time to get better. The next morning, Jack and Alex carry the wolf in the secluded cabin they have built near the mountain. They take care of him. White Fang gets better soon, but he is aggressive. The two friends discuss what they should do with him. Jack will try to approach him and remove his chain. However, White Fang shows them he is not friendly. Jack realizes that the wolf is afraid of the wooden stick Alex is holding into his hands. He makes an attempt to loosen the wolf's chain, but White Fang bites his hand. Despite, the two of them become friends soon enough, and the wolf now runs around the cabin without threatening anyone. Additionally, he runs with Jack inside the mine he and Alex have built. Suddenly, an explosion takes place, and Alex along with White Fang have to save Jack. Upon taking him outside, Alex swipes some gold dust off the wolf's paw. The two men realize that they have probably hit the jackpot. They rush back inside the mine and see that they have found a source of gold. Alex gives Jack a sack of gold and sends him to town to get the gold tested for its purity. Jack takes White Fang and does just that. The gold is almost 100% pure. Jack is ready to return to his secret location. However, Smith and his men have spotted him and the wolf in town. They follow them. While the group sleeps inside the cabin, the one of the gang members covers their chimney in order to make breathing hard for them. They try to get out but the door is sealed. Like that was not bad enough, the gang starts shooting at them, and they have no choice but to take cover. Even worse, the gang lights up some torches and they use them to set the cabin on fire. Jack and Alex do their best to keep the fire from spreading. While they do, one of the gangsters busts in and is about to shoot them, but White Fang jumps on him and takes him down. The man's gun sets off and the bullet accidentally hits another gangster. Smith reloads his gun to shoot White Fang, but he is out of bullets. Having run out of luck, White Fang jumps on him and takes him down. He bites some good pieces of his and keeps him down. The other gangster tries to shoot the wolf, but Jack jumps on him and neutralizes him. The group takes the gang in town. They bring them to the sheriff. The thugs were taken to the police station to receive the proper punishment. Jack thinks about his next moves and contemplates on returning back to his hometown in San Francisco to become a hotel owner along with Alex and his girlfriend. Knowing he can't bring White Fang along, he takes him to the fields and tries to set him free. White Fang does not want to stay there. Jack has to try several ways to push him away, even throwing a rock at him. Since the wolf will not leave, Jack's last solution is to use a wooden stick to frighten White Fang, because he knows he is afraid of it. Jack returns in town and rides to the port. He is about to enter the ship, but he has a change of heart and decides to stay back. After greeting Alex, he returns back to his cabin and rebuilds it. Although he lives alone for a couple of days, White Fang realizes that his friend is back and runs to meet with him. At that moment, they ran toward each other and hugged each other tight. The friendship between two different species shows us that everyone has a soul. The two of them spend the rest of their days together out in the wild.